All right, everyone. Our recording is indeed in progress. We're, we're going to start one more time, another year with a, Hashem's help, another year of, of studying, of studying Chumash uh, Breshit, but the Hamisha Chumash Torah. One second. And hopefully we, we pray that Hashem helps us get through yet another year. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different than year, this year than we have in the past. I have uh, uh, I have uh, three issues that I want to talk about today. Each of them will be relatively brief, even though each one in and of, in and of itself uh, can rightfully be said to be a semester course in uh, in in Chumash. The first one is the very first Rashi in. Uh, the very first Rashi in the whole Torah. And I picked that this uh, this year because, again, I'm dedicating this year uh, and subsequent Shehurim to the uh, to our Chayalim, our brave Chayalim, our medics, the, all the people who take care of Kla Yisrael, and fortunately also to Zaka, the, these wonderful, brave people who must see some of the most vile situations. So let us dedicate this learning tonight and uh, let's say, let's call it uh, for, say for Bereshit, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, doctors and the nurses, to the Chayalim, of course, and to, uh, to all those who are involved uh, at various stages in the protection of the Jewish people. And let us not be so naive as to say, well, when things get bad, then we're going to say Tehillim. Tehillim is wonderful. If Tehillim is wonderful, we should say it every week. All right. And we should say it in, but not individually. I'm part, not, not individually, definitely individually. But I'd like to make a plea that in every shul, there needs to be a prayer for, um, for the, the what we call Anshia Bitachon, the people that are Hashem, that Hashem's Shlichim to keep us safe, the doctors. The chayalim, the nurses, the uh, the medics, all of those people who um, who keep us safe, whether we're on vacation or whether we're living there, that's very important. Okay, so now we're gonna the first uh, of of this evening's readings will be simply the very first Rashi in all of the, in all of of of, uh, of the Chumash, and it. Uh, it is so apt today because of the fact that um, uh, the very people, Yimach Shemam V'Zichram, may HaKadosh Baruch Hu blot them out and, and, and foil their, their evil plans. The very people um, that, uh, that, that want to say that listimatim, that we are ganovim, we we have stolen the land of Eretz Israel, and uh, and of course uh, it, this is none other than than Hamas and their ilk, um, who uh, who are willing to to do any. There is no vile deed that they're not willing to to perform in order to take Eretz Eretz Israel away from the Jewish people. Not going to succeed, and uh, so let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi, of course, what he did was he spent uh, one third of his life, one third of his life, uh, or each day. Now, whether it's each day or one third of his Torah time, uh, we don't know for sure. But uh, one thing he did was he he went through all of midrashim that were extant at that time, um, and in doing so, he went through uh, the midrashim. And uh, where there were errors or there were corrupted texts, when we say corrupted texts, we don't mean there was a deliberate distortion. But what we mean by corrupted texts is that, of course, there were no there were no uh, 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 printing presses in those days. Rashi was born in 1040. He passed away in 1105. He lived, uh, quote, a mere 65 years. And of course, uh, he gave us all an eternity of learning. So um, uh, so that was one thing he did. Uh, the second thing he did, of course, was to 
write his perushim. Remember, Chumash, Tanakh, not all of Tanakh, but Chumash, Tanakh, and uh, then, of course, the Talmud, almost all of the Talmud. One person. Wasn't, and now we do it by committee, by the way. Nothing to be ashamed of, but now what he did is a single person, he or the Ramban or others, huh? he, we do by committee. He did it all by himself using uh, much more antiquated uh, methods of writing in terms of ink and paper and all of those things. But he wrote, of course, the, this inspirational parish. And in it, he writes, The reality is, if the Torah is a law book, if it is intended to tell us mitzvot, then the first mitzvah which is given to Klai Yisrael is in Sefer Shmot. Shehi mitzvah rishona shinitztavu ba'i Yisrael. That achodesh hazela lachem. The idea of the first month being Nisan, and that we have a mitzvah to count from there, that is the first mitzvah given to the Jewish people formally. So start there. Go all of Sefer Breshit, 12 prokim into Shmot, and then you'll start. And why did Akadosh Baruch Hu begin the Torah with the word with with the uh, the, the words with Bereshit and with the word Bereshit? Mishum. The Rashi answers, Koach Maasav Higid Laamo. Hakadosh Baruch Hu's strength he he conveyed to the Jewish people and and the strength of his creation. He conveyed to, to us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us, the, certainly we have a whole planet on which we could settle and people could settle, but Hashem gave the Nachala of Eretz Israel to, uh, to us. If the people of the, of the world should say to, to uh, the Jews, and namely, the, 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 let us say, the, the, the so-called United Nations, Israel, if they say that we are thieves, right? That you actually conquered and took the lands that, that were the seven, the lands of the seven nations. The Jews shall say to them, call our Etsy the entire world was created by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, ex nihilo, from nothing. Ex meaning from, nihilo, from nothing. So the so Hashem Yisborach created the world, ex nihilo, uh, 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 an entity from literally nothing. Now, none of us knows what that means, something from nothing. None of us knows what nothing is. Okay, But, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu did, did so. Okay, so and therefore, the Jews can say to to the uh, non-Jewish world, um, God created all Eretz Israel. We know that from Bereshi, uh, the land, the, all the whole planet. We know that from the very first pasuk in the Torah. Okay, who He created it. Unatana laasher yashar beinav. And he gave it to whom he wishes. Birtsono Natanala Hem. And it is his desire, to, it was his desire to give to them. Uvirtsono Natalamehem. He also desired to take it away from them. Unatana Lanu. And he gave it to us. Eretz Israel, which we celebrate today and every day. And we thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we have nearly half the Jewish people is now living in the land of Eretz Israel, the land that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us. So, uh, so uh, we rejoice in that. And we, we of course, uh, refute the whole idea of whatever the United Nations say or whatever, and certainly what, what the others, uh, and certainly uh, not just the United Nations, but, but uh, all of the other uh, nations in the world who deny our integral right to, to the land of Israel, we have the first passage in the Torah. God created the world. God created Eretz Israel, And Hashem gave Eretz Israel to us. So that is the first thing that we should 
on this at this time when we realize uh, that we, we that our that our precious soldiers must now fight to protect the Jewish people and the land of Eretz Israel. So um, today, I think it is worthy for us to start with that Rashi. That's number one. Now, the second thing that I think that we should talk about is, um, uh, you know, the scientists engage in uh, uh, trying to understand the creation of the world or non-creation of the world. There are various different views. I mean, up until 100 years ago, most most of the scientific community just believed, believed that the earth always was, 150 years ago, whatever it may be, that the, the, what we have, existence always was um, and, uh, and always will be. But nowadays, the accepted uh, theory, and it will change. This is what I call speculative science. That no, I'm not putting it down, by the way. I'm not for a moment saying that it's, it's bad or absurd. But there's two types of science. One that makes that postulates that uh, makes statements that are verifiable. Okay, uh, for example, <laughs> I just learned this firsthand about um, uh, whether whether it's uh, uh, you know uh, especially in bacterial infections, we have verifiable evidence that that certain uh, certain uh, anecdotes, uh, I'm sorry, antibiotics uh, and their compounds are capable of eradicating certain diseases. Certain are not capable. That is verifiable. It's something that it's empirically provable. But then there are things such as how old is the earth? Is it uh, 5,784 years old? Is it, is it uh, 13 uh, is it 3 billion, 13 billion years old? How old is it? Now, those things in terms of science are, uh, with the exception of 5784, which is a religious statement, not necessarily a statement of, of, uh, of uh, shall we say, uh, uh, empirical fact, that can change. We, we now sent out the Webb telescope, and it's giving us insight into the earliest beginnings we think of the world. And even that will change 30 years from now, maybe even 30 seconds from now. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't study it or do our best to uh, to understand uh, the age of the earth. Uh, but uh, we need to know that, of course, that subject, as we get more information, uh, it's subject to change. Okay, now, um, what I want to talk about the the uh, the current view in science, and it's not the only view, but certain it's probably the prevailing view in science is that the universe or that which we call universe, namely to say, a a universe which has a tangible physical existence, molecules and uh, elements and things of that nature. Um, that began with what, what they call the Big Bang, okay? Uh, now, the Big Bang wasn't necessarily a bang, but one of the theories of the Big Bang is that whatever entity or energy existed um, 3.4 billion years, I believe it's that, that ago, uh, at some point began to compact and compact and come back, compact until it burst forth into what we would call the Big Bang. And what's interesting about the Big Bang is the the uh, the pressure was so intense that it uh, all it it began the energy itself as as it cooled uh, began to form molecules, elements, etc. And that and they are moving out in all directions uh, from that point wherever that point was. Now, uh, I'm no scientist. So, A, you will never hear me debunk it because that would be silly, right? But that's that's the current theory and that the, that the universe is expanding and that uh, telescopes such as Webb, Hubble, etc., 
are examining a universe which is expanding and which uh, um, it, it does give off signals um, uh, as to um, what it's like as it goes. Now, I just want to share with you today something along that line, that when we daven every day, again, uh, I'm only using this as sort of as a basis but uh, uh, but but not to say anything with uh, with any degree of of, uh, of of certainty. But one thing is relatively certain, and that is every day we start our tefillah right after Pesukah de Zimra. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam. Blessed are you, Hashem, Yotzer Or. You create light, light, uh, which we can accept in terms of the idea of energy. Which Hakadosh Baruch Hu, with which Hakadosh Baruch Hu created the world, Yotzer Or Uvarei Choshech, and create, and you create uh, with that. With there's light, and there's going to be darkness with it. Ose uh, Shalom Uvarei Atakol, that you makes you make uh, Shalom, not just peace, but but Shlemut, uh, uh, entirety of of the universe. Ose Shalom Uvarei Atakol. And with this, every other creation comes. Now, again, scientists believe that the that the universe, that what we call the universe, is ever expanding, and there is a machloket, a difference of opinion as to whether this ever expanding universe will at some point begin to contract. I dare say, those of us who are listening to this uh, this uh, this Zoom session will not be around to be able to verify one way or the other because it will be taken. If it does ever happen, it'll take billions of years. But I want to point out that in our tefillah, when we daven each day, there is a certain hint of this concept of expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, and it begins with a brach of Yotzer Or Varechoshech Ose Shalom that God created light and that that the energy um, of the universe, and um, and then it begins Hameir LaAretz VeLadarim Aleha, that this light energy uh, provides the energy of for the world for all of existence as we know it. And every day when we daven, we go on a journey through the universe itself, almost a microcosm of, um, uh, of to some degree, what we now think the, the world was created. Okay, we start by by talking about um, up in Shemayim, in the Rakia, beyond the Rakia, uh, we 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 talk about. The, the angelic praise of a Kaddish Baruch Hu at the Kisei Kavod, far far beyond any of our uh, of any of our physical existence per se, and it's purely in in the area of Ruchniut of spirituality, and so um, every day or what we would call a day, of course here we call it a day, but at every at, at appointed periods of what we call time, the malachim, every, uh, all of them, uh, praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzva'os. Now the word Kadosh in Hebrew, it doesn't help us to say it means holy, because then we have to ask what is holy according to the Torah. So the best thing that we can do, I believe, is to, uh, to say that holiness is purposefulness because we know in Sefer in, in Parsha Bereshit we know that the first time we find the word kadosh in meaning in, in the meaning of sanctity it's regarding Shabbos. Shabbos becomes Shabbos. It's indistinguishable as a period of time bet between Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's only sacred because Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave it that. He gave it purposefulness for us, and we as Jews are an Am Kadosh. We as Jews have, are a purposeful people. 
we see that, we know that despite the pain of this week, we know that we are a purposeful people and we were endowed with purpose, with mission by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, okay? So uh, every day we do, and, and what is HaKadosh Baruch Hu called in Yeshayo and every day in our davening? Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzvaot. This word appears in this week's parsha. Kadosh, Vayikadesh Oto. Shabbat, God gave sanctity to. He gave Shabbat purposefulness. And then he gave the Jewish people purposefulness. And God himself is purposeful. Now, it's not enough to say that Hashem is purposeful. Hashem is threefold purposeful. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Hashem, whenever we see three, the Chutam is Shulash, Lobi Mirai Yinatek that those things which, which have a threefold connection, they are inseparable, unchangeable. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is totally purposeful. Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzvaot. That Hashem is totally purposeful. And Hashem is the only being in the universe who is totally purposeful. And he imbued us with a sense of purpose as well. Just as he, as he imbued the Shabbos and endowed the Shabbos with a sense of purpose. No other place in Bereshit do we find Kedusha in the sense of sanctity. We do find the root more than once, two or three times, but in those in those situations, it doesn't mean sanctified. It doesn't mean designated for a purpose, but that's something else. So now, so here we're, here we're talking about Shemayim. We are talking about the outer, uh, the outer existence of the universe, among the Malachim, and every, what we would call every day, they say Shira to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And we know in Jewish tradition that certain Malachim have to say Shira at certain times and certain things, and they're endowed with certain missions. That we'll get to later on when we talk about Yaakov Avinu, perhaps. But more importantly for us right now uh, is the idea that uh, at, right after after we we restate the statement of the uh, the daily proclamation of the malachim of the angels. What do we see? Lekeil baruch moti They give very beautiful songs to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, whatever that means. All right, uh, and we say that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is Borein, uh, that he is Hakadosh uh, uh, Baruch Hu may have numerous creations. Okay, Borei uh, refuot. Uh, don't any float. Hakadosh Baruch Hu creates um, uh, uh, healing and a whole series of things in uh, to those of us who who live in this more tangible world, not the world of the above, but we slowly each and every day come down to this world in which we live, a tangible physical world as opposed to the world of the malachim which is somewhere out there in that in what we would call space okay uh adon ani flows right shabachoy right that that in each and every day uh we praise the we praise sakrish borhu and the angels praise sakrish borhu and then we say baruch ata hashem yotzer ham orot now remember what happened in the original creation was uh at least we're we're speculating again. Speculative science. Uh, it's not Abi courses by any means. It's just speculative science. That is that. In fact, at the time of the Big Bang, right after that, the heat was and, and, and was so intense that it exploded outward. But as uh, within milliseconds, it began to cool, and the physical universe came into being. That's uh, what appears to be uh, from what we know now. Excuse me. <clears throat> it appears to be <clears throat> from what we know now. Uh, so we say we say that a uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu is Yotzer Hamorot. What are the Morot? They are the planets, the stars, the asteroids, the um, the uh, the elements, the molecules. They all come into being as the universe cools, in within milliseconds. By the way, and then we say, "Blessed are you, Hashem, who creates the Morot." creates the lights, the great cosmic entity that we look at each and every day. So we are moving from the celestial beings that are in uh, near the Kisei Kavod 
And we find ourselves moving together, each Jew, as we as we recite Pesukah Zimra and we recite Birchas Kriyashma. We're now in the first Birchas Kriyashma. We now we now thank Hakadosh Baruch Hu for the fact that there are physical entities in the world, but not just physical entities. Okay, we say. Um, uh, now it's not just the physical world, but a world of love. A world, love always means caring. Love always means from a Jewish standpoint that the lover wishes to help the one, the object of her or his love to that object to reach its full potential. So we say, we say each and every day to our Kaddish Baruch Hu, thank you and Chemla Gadola, you, you have given us great, uh, you have bestowed upon us great compassion. Uh, uh, and then we talk about Yisrael, the Jewish people. It moves from humans in general to the Jewish people. And of course, when we say uh, the Shalom May you um, and you and you may you bring us from scattered all over the world, right? Uh, and bring us to this uh, uh, upright to the land of Eretz Israel that we celebrate today, and that in Yer Tzishem, our brothers and sisters will be defending in the next few next few weeks or days, right? And then we say. Uh, of the care of Tanu Shimcha Gadol, then what do we want? We want not only that you that you love us, the care of Tanu, you will bring us close, you will bring us to your great name, to thank you, and to proclaim your unity, to proclaim Hashem's unity. Hashem is one, and this unbelievable world and all of its multifaceted aspects was created by the one creator, okay? Then, then we say, Baruch atah Hashem habucher be'amo Yisrael be'ava. Blessed are you, Hashem, who has created uh, the uh, and chosen the Jewish people. That's how we move from the celestial out, outlying areas all the way down through the cosmos, down to the to the to the physical world in which we live, to Eretz Israel, and to uh, the closeness of the Jewish people to Hashem, but we're not done. Watch how it ends, which you know yourselves. And then we say, Abucher, blessed are you Hashem, Abucher, Ba'amo Yisrael, Ba'ava, you Hashem who created the cosmos and everything that's in it, you chose us. And, and then what do we say? Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Every Jew needs to to recognize, and, and there was such a sad, sad story to, today. I, I was listening in Hebrew uh, to the Hebrew station, and these poor people who were so terrorized by those yimach shamonics, and they could hear them shooting and banging. So there was one family that was a Chiloni family. They were they're a family that uh, you know they they weren't certainly weren't observant. And this was on the radio. The mother said, my my 12-year-old daughter came up to me and said, I think we're going to die. Maybe we should say Shema. So in the heart of every single Jew, uh, they did survive, for Hashem, that group. But but the idea is, within the heart, we say Shema Yisrael, Shem Akein, Shem Achad. And what comes after that? The Avta. Finally, it gets from the cosmos, from the Kisei Akavod, through the cosmos, into our physical world, and into the, our planet, and into Eretz Israel, and then into the Jewish people. But it's not done there. Kriyat Shema every day then concludes the Avta. The most, it's singular. It's not plural. We're not dealing, we're not dealing with, with all of the... Uh, uh, the, the the various uh, 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 forms of of creation we're dealing in the end each and every day when we when we talk about uh, uh, kriya shema it's just you and the kodesh baruch hu is just I singular the kodesh baruch hu look how chazal will bring us each and every day 
through this remarkable journey if we think about it. And then, of course, it's Kriyashma and then everything else because we have a relationship with Hashem. I thought maybe we'd talk about this on, on Parsha Kriyashit and the Pasa and, and of course, realizing that, that what is contested all the time is the Jewish people's connection to Eretz Israel, to HaKadosh Baruch himself. But we know, and we will always know, that 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 the bond that we have is unbreakable. And and the way it is assured is through our daily recitation of the Shema and not just uh, to the God of the cosmos, but to the God who says, And by the way, the love is not one way. Of course, it's two ways. We love God, but we can only do that because Hashem loves us. Okay, everyone. Um, didn't get to everything today, but I hope you found it meaningful. Near to Shem, we'll pick it up next week. Thank you. Good Shabbos. Bye, everybody. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos, everyone.